Sagittarius, this is your week ahead astrology forecast by Astrology Motivation from Born Without Boundaries. In this video, we go over weekly aspects and transits and how they impact your natal sun and what that means for your day to day. We're gonna start out really broad with the big stuff that everybody should know about and then we're gonna whittle that down to the Sagittarius focused stuff. And then I'm going to break everything down into the decans. A decan is a group of uh, 10 degrees. Um, there's three decans in every zodiac sign because all zodiac signs have a total of 30 degrees. And the reason we break uh, things down into the sets of the groups of 10 degrees is because it's within that 20 degree kind of toggle room, that 10 degree space, um, that the aspects will be the most impactful. Anything way under 10 degrees or way above 10 degrees, the aspect won't be defined enough to, or strong enough to really make an energetic impact. So an aspect is the energy or the way that the angle between two planets impacts you. So um, 10 degrees can really make or break whether or not that's even having any impact at all. So that's why from one side of a zodiac to another, it's it's going to, there's gonna be a lot of different impacts on your natal suns. It's not really the same for all of you. So old fashioned horoscopes are very, very inaccurate. For this video, you will need your birth date. That's all, you'll just need to know the day that you're born, which we all do, hopefully, hopefully. Um, if you want the most accurate reading, I would recommend you go get your natal chart so you can see exactly on which degree your sun sits in the zodiac sign of Sagittarius. Some of you I know already have it. Feel free to comment below which degree of Sagittarius your sun sits on. For those of you who want a natal chart, it's free, it's easy. All you have to do is search free natal chart and there's a lot of websites that do it. You'll need your birth date, your birth time, and your birth location, all of which at least in the US are located on your birth certificate. I just found out that that's not true for all uh, places, but that's what you'll need. You'll need those three things. You put in that information and it'll spit it out in a couple of seconds and you'll know where all your planets are located. A natal chart is the best way to start your astrology journey. If you really love astrology and you wanna get into it, all of us start with our own natal chart. It's just the best way to begin and understand who you are in connection to the universe. This is this is the root of all astrology. So we're gonna start off with the big stuff, Sagittarius. Now, for those of you who don't know where your natal sun is located in Sagittarius, you just know your birth date, that's okay. I'll give you estimates as to about which birth days are being impacted or the range of the birth dates in relationship that or that correlate to the decans. So the big stuff, I, I write it all down, guys. That's what I'm looking at. I got my notes. What's the big stuff? So Mercury is going to move into Gemini. So it's a transit. Mercury is transiting into Gemini on the 11th of this week. Now a lot happens on the 11th this week. For those of you who didn't read the thumbnail or the title, um, this is the week of June 6th through the 12th of 2023. Um, Mercury transits into Gemini on the 11th, which is the same day that Pluto retrogrades back into Capricorn. It's all happening on the 11th. It's about the time on the 11th when uh, Jupiter and Pluto break their square. They're finally not squared to each other anymore, which is a big relief. But Pluto is um, opposite Venus, and Venus is still square to Jupiter. So Venus is kind of in a hot spot right now. She is square. She's in opposition to Pluto. She's square to Jupiter, and she's square the nodes because Jupiter is conjunct the north node. So this is sort of the washing out and cleansing of everything Venus. That's money, value systems, what you're attracted to, any kind of romantic drudgery that you need to get rid of and purge. Also big, big changes and dynamic changes because Jupiter is square to Venus. So there's that sense of everything is bigger. Everything is bigger when Jupiter is involved. It's very, very exaggerated. It's very, very in your face. It's unmistakable and with Pluto involved, it's probably going to be, these, per, these changes are gonna be permanent because they have to be. This is sort of a metamorphous time. Since Venus is in Leo, we're confronting our ego, we're confronting how 
we love ourselves or are we in balance with how we see ourselves we're confronting our romantic side we're confronting a lot of issues with regards to our the way that we want to be seen as opposed to is that still connected to our truth so we also have let me see i think i had one more pluto trine mercury so this is a lot when pluto goes retrograde it's trying to mercury um i just feel like this is a huge delivery system that's coming mercury has been in taurus for so long like under under underscoring or underlining or investigating those uh those finances with mercury transiting into gemini this is what we've learned beneath what we've learned when we dig and we investigate that's what mercury trying at pluto is all about really being able to focus your mind and think deeply and be comfortable with the darker aspects of life so that we don't run from them what we've learned learning about darker aspects of life what is going to be announced what's going to be disseminated what's going to be distributed to the masses in terms of information remember just last week we had that curious conjunction between mercury and uranus there's some bright news that's coming and this is uh, gemini is the perfect place for that to happen because it's home to mercury and it's the, sort of the house of siblings the house of friendship well friendships is more aquarius but it's very social energy it's very talk to everybody listen it's almost like i heard it through the grapevine kind of energy it will be very interesting to see what news or information comes out but since pluto is retrograding back into capricorn we have a lot to do with the changes this the destruction and clearing out of corporate systems and injury and and industry just an fyi so let's dig down to you guys. We always look at Jupiter when we're talking about Sagittarius in general because Jupiter is your ruling dignitary and Jupiter is still very much in the hot spot. This week, all week, Jupiter is going to be um, still conjunct. I think it moves between four and five degrees. Um, four and five degrees Taurus, it's still technically conjunct the North Node and opposite the South Node and it is square to Venus. So it's 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 very dramatic venus is in leo this is super dramatic energy um just the sun just jupiter square venus is over dramatic it's spendthrifty it spends too much it indulges too much it kind of goes a little bit crazy with that and that could cause some issues that's where the square comes involved it's just ch it's challenging but with venus also opposite pluto this could be the last time we indulge this could be the time when it's sort of the straw that breaks the camel's back so understand that jupiter square venus could also include some challenges when it comes to finances or even your uh, romantic situation it could just it, it things could just be a lot more dramatic than you were than you're even used to them and all this week jupiter sextile the saturn which means we are working to get things done we are working toward productivity jupiter sextile saturn is probably the most productive and um 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 like accomplished kind of energy or aspect in in astrology it's just you can get anything done with that aspect in your chart and with it in transit it's just telling us that the universe is trying to get stuff done it's we're trying to expand and grow in a mature fashion that makes sense and get rid of the stuff that doesn't really make sense it's almost like getting more serious about where we want to be in the future and how we want to grow in the direction we want to go and actually starting to plan it out um so if you're starting to feel that that's that sort of blessed aspect of saturn um uh, jupiter sextile to saturn so let's break things down into the decans so decan one if your natal sun is between zero and yeah zero and nine degrees sagittarius you are in decan one or your natal sun fall it lives in decan one and you are sagittarius one this correlates to november sagittarians if you are on the scorpio cusp all the way up through i would say november 30th um maybe even some of you december 1st this is sagittarius one um your natal suns are sextile to pluto so there is tremendous expansion and growth and it, it creates a for a formidable formidable a formidable sense of self 
this sense or presence that just get things done and it commands people's respect and you can move on this and you can change and dynamic changes to your life are going to be happening that's a long-term transit with the square to saturn you're going to there's a long-term square to saturn for this year sagittarius one so yes you will be running up and bud butting heads with the way you used to do things and being able to transfer what you used to do with what you do now is you're going to run into complications with paperwork and rules and laws and regulations and everything that is created to keep you in one place that is going to be challenging you but in a way it can also help you grow um and then you have the long-term transit if you are a scorpio cusp with uh the trine to neptune which is actually beautiful and creative energy um this is a great energy for composing or getting into your artwork or just discovering your psychic abilities or your artistic abilities um and especially with that sextile to pluto this is finding your soul finding your faith finding your sense of connectivity to your god space um for this week and a couple weeks now you've been quincunx to jupiter so that's your own <laughs> your your sort of own your own energy expansion is frustrating you so it's not that you don't want to do it it's just that you're coming up against constant challenges to grow it's like you want to move maybe too fast for yourself in some ways slowing it down and having more patience can be very difficult with this energy but it will pass in a couple of weeks um this week your natal suns are trying it to venus which is an exceptional energy that just makes you beautiful it makes you have this harmony and grace about yourself. It makes you just be able to just charm people without trying. It's also a very gentle and creative energy. It's a very loving energy. And with it, there could be great harmony that comes to your romantic relationships and your checking account. Um, especially with Venus and Leo, how you look or how you feel about yourself beautifying yourself day of beauty reorganizing or redecorating the house this is great stuff and when venus is in harmony it's really wonderful too you know um it's easy to spend more money but this is a good time to actually if you're going to buy expensive things like a car you're looking for a new house this is a great time to sign the contract because it just brings its blessings and it kind of gets you the best deals there's harmony there um this week you all by the 11th by june 11th you will be you all will be in opposition to mercury before then only the cusps will be You'll, you guys might start to feel this all week opposition to mercury feels like kind of a mini mercury retrograde it's not mercury isn't in retrograde but it feels like mercury is just rubbing on you it's like almost like too much information all the time you can't get it all done it could cause a lot of confusion it could cause a lot of clogs it could cause a lot of brain farts so just an fyi that will pass by this week but it's but that will pass by in by the end of next week but it will it will start to be frustrating and those of you especially cusps you'll start to feel it right away but by the end of the week everybody will start to feel that um so if you have any really important projects to get done or messages to send i would do it in the beginning of the week not toward the end of the week because that's a that's a tough that's a that's a tough aspect for real eloquent uh, communications it, it just really won't happen that way um okay sagittarius too so those of you who are born maybe december 1st definitely december 2nd through the 10th of um of december uh your if your natal sun is between 10 and 19 degrees sagittarius you are sagittarius choose maybe up to the 11th could be um these things change because sagittarius doesn't always begin and end on the same date right so so there's estimates here but the most accurate way is of course your natal chart so your natal suns have been for a while trying to chiron which means you're healing you're going through a lot of healing and we talk about this every week physical healing because chiron is in aries we also have this week however a trying to mars so that means that means fluency back in the body that means healing when it comes to your physical self that means having energy or feeling like energies it's almost like feeling more harmonious with taking action and doing things feeling more harmonious with being more physically active so this is great signs and a great breakthrough however all week long your natal sun is in opposition 
to where the current sun is, at least to the end of the week when the sun transits into um, the third decan of Gemini. So for most of this week, your natal sun is in opposition to the sun. This is confronting your ego. It's, it's confronting your own sense of self. It's confronting your pig-headedness. It's, it's a, a constant like, uh, you know, what are you going to do with yourself? Where do I go from here kind of energy? I wrote this down for you guys. Major healing that forces you to confront your ego. Right? A sense of if I don't get over my ego, I won't be able to get on with myself. But with that trying to Chiron and the trying to Mars, you are so set up to want to heal that this could be a really wonderful growth experience for you and a healing experience for you this week. A real push forward. So Sagittarius 3s. Sagittarius 3s, if you were born between, I would say, maybe the 11th, 12th through November 21st, you are Sagittarius 3s definitely uh, Capricorn cusps, Sagittarius 3s. If your natal sun is located between 20 and 29 degrees Sagittarius, you are Sagittarius 3s. So your natal sun, as of the 11th, will become in opposition to the current sun. So you'll be getting kind of your ego checked. Um, really kind of a look in the mirror, uh, burning off kind of steam type of you know confronting your own ego type of energy you have a long-term uh, square to Neptune which can fog the mind and cause a lot of confusion but it can also if you use it if you put it into something creative and you become creative and you start to use that energy creatively you won't actually get distracted by it you could actually grow from it so that's your choice that's over the next couple of years you also have that pesky quincunx to uranus where things just come up out of the blue and might surprise you curveballs even what you like could surprise you and it could cause a great deal of frustration in your life that's over the next couple of years now and you've been though and you've been living with these long-term aspects so I think the one that impacts you most this week is as of the end of the week, your natal suns are going to be in opposition to the current sun. And throughout the week or through the 11th, your natal suns are going to be quincunx to Mercury, which can feel very frustrating when it comes to the way you think, the way you articulate yourself. Um, just frustrating energy. So um, get used to that. It's going to be okay. I think I think nothing nothing bad will come from it. It could just be kind of frustrating and a week that you really learn a lot about your capabilities and what you are what you're what you're actually ready for versus what your ego tries to tell you you're ready for sun versus the sun could also um, be bouts of low self-esteem just an fyi you could struggle with your self-confidence this week it or toward the end of the week it won't last forever right it'll only last about a week and so this too shall pass sagittarius let me know how is this energy impacting you how are you already experiencing it please subscribe to the channel to help astrology motivation grow the goal my goal is to have 10,000 subscribers here by the end of the summer I think we can do it especially with your help also give us a thumbs up and come on over to born without boundaries tarot for your week ahead tarot card reading I love you guys and I'll see you next week